Hey YouTube. So uh, we're going to get right to it this morning. Uh, my wife didn't feed the dog yet so I'm not taking him for a walk until she's done. <clears throat> it's a little early. Uh, we're on schedule as far as our you know routine. But I figured I'd get to this thing a little quicker. Now I just want you to know that um, I uh, a spreadsheet like this is constantly something that you can update. And when, you know, as soon as you learn something, like say, you know, let's just say the amount of gas you use or whatever, you can always make changes in this thing. So, um, last night I made some changes in this. Uh, the one thing I had noticed that I missed, and I was hoping that somebody would have mentioned it, was that I didn't have any depreciation here on the sawmill. And, you know, you need to have that. Um, it's one thing, like this line up here, it's one thing to have the sawmill money reimbursed to you after you've paid for the sawmill. It's another thing to get money to replace that sawmill. And that's where I'm using this depreciation for. So depreciation, even though it's similar to... The way I'm using depreciation here is not the way you would use it for taxes. Okay. You, so I don't want you to confuse that. Maybe there should be a different title to this at the moment I not sure what I should change it to but I'm going to keep it at depreciation but what I've done here is I've added depreciation in here and what I want to do is that is make depreciation cover if you look at these two numbers here like for the truck I want it to cover not only the the payment on the truck but I want it to buy me another truck okay that's the only way you're going to be able to replace you know what you have because if you borrow forty thousand dollars and you give it back to the bank and when you're done paying for the truck you still don't have forty thousand dollars to buy another truck therefore you have to go make another loan now you can do that there's nothing wrong in business with borrowing money that's you know normal business routine but I want to move beyond that I want to have assets because assets what's is what builds wealth especially if you take care of the assets Alright, anyway, with that said, I did make some changes in the spreadsheet. Um, it's not a big deal. Uh, also, guys, I had gotten a couple comments about, you know, would I be willing to spread the, uh, share the spreadsheet. That, this is why I'm doing this stuff, to help anybody. I had gotten a comment yesterday where one guy said that he um, is a tree, uh, tree trimmer or whatever, uh, and he... Um, didn't charge enough to replace his wood chipper. You know, shame on you. I mean, you know, you you need to have these things down. The problem with these spreadsheets is it's not hard to do this. Come on, any uh, I I could have any one of my grandkids sit down here and fill in the numbers once they know a couple variables. The problem is, will you do it? And if you read some of the comments of people who do this stuff, you know, for a living, like I do they uh, recognize that a lot of people will not do the work. All right, so anyway, let me just get to this so that we can get on with, uh, you know, where we're headed here. So I've made some changes in depreciation. I added in the uh, helper, the numbers for the helper. I know I kept it at $20 an hour. And like I say, these numbers are valuable. You can make this eight if you can hire a young kid to come and work and learn to trade. And that's part of the other thing too, you know, I don't understand why this younger crowd doesn't want to learn how to do this stuff. I, I live in an area that is very depressed, okay? I moved here after we retired because we just wanted to be alone. We wanted to, we don't want the headaches of the city. And we didn't bring the headaches with us. However, um, you know, I've been trying to find somebody to give me a little helping hand here. And I'm getting people telling me they want $25 an hour to do something where they've never made $25 an hour in their life. And if they have, it's only at, uh, you know, at someone else's expense trying to keep them with a job. Now, that's not to say that you can't make $25 an hour, and I'm not depriving them of $25 an hour. What I'm saying is, if I'm going to take a young person... And, I mean, I do a lot of body work. I do, you know, I work on my vehicle's mechanic work. I have the sawmill. I, I, I'm building a house. You know, and I need some help with that stuff. There's no doubt about it. And you would think that I could get somebody to work for, say, minimum wage and learn all of this. 
I'd be even willing to give some of my stuff in my will to somebody who would be willing to help. But, you know, that's an ongoing problem. And a lot of the older people that are my age and older that I talk to have the same problem. There's nobody left to help. The kids have taken what they can take and left. So, all right, anyway, that's, that's my rant for the day. Okay, so we end up now, after I've made a couple of changes, with a cost of $225.24 an hour. Okay, that's what it costs to operate this entire operation here. And don't forget, it's like I said, you know, it's um, an ongoing business. It's an everyday business. It's an eight-hour-a-day business. So this would be something like we used to have years ago where you actually worked every day and, you know, you your work had a purpose. Oh, okay, so we come down here and what I did was I added 25% profit to this 225 and I ended up at 281.55 uh, the hourly pro no, gross profit is 56.31 now this changes the, 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 the numbers here to 88 cents a board foot now um, the thing that uh, we talked that I talked about yesterday is you know is this 88 cents a board foot that it's going to cost you to do stuff is this number practical? Well, again, I'll go back to the 2x4. If you have a 2x4, 5.3 board feet times 0.88 cents, you're looking at $4.66 now for a 2x4. Okay, that's too much money because 2x4s are 319 at lows, and not that I'm using lows to tell me how to do things, but let's face it. Anybody can get online, look at Lowe's, find the price of a 2x4. You've got to be realistic. So $1.47 more for a 2x4 cut by me is not something that I'm going to be able to sell as readily as I can sell one, you know, like say Walmart or Lowe's price, I mean. Now some local dealers may even sell them for less. So you have to do your homework to find out what the market is bearing at the moment. So this number is too high. Alright, so once we know that this bottom number, and like I said, this is our important number. Yesterday was 77 cents, I think. Today it's 88 because I made some changes. And, oh, as far as what I was going to say about sharing a spreadsheet, I'm doing this so that I can share what I have and what I've done because I've, I've been, you know, profitable at it. And I would hope that somebody could... Uh, that what I have to say would help them. So, yes, I'm more than willing to share this spreadsheet. Um, the thing is, is let me get through the uh, the whole lecture about all of this, and then, you know, all you got to do is send me your email address. I'll be happy to send you a copy of it. All right, so um, let me get started here now with, the, with today's thing. So we finally got to the most important number, which is that 88 cents, and how much it costs you or how much it costs this company to cut uh, wood um, by the board foot. So now we can charge by the board foot. We know what to charge. We also know what to charge by the hour. Okay. Now in our case, charging this uh, 281 an hour, now this would, you, you have to realize if somebody says I want some oak boards, and you have an oak log laying there and you take the log, put it on the mill and you cut it up. 281 an hour is a whole lot of money for them to pay. But what they're not recognizing is you are actually going back and you are paying, you are charging for the cutting down of the tree, the bringing the tree here, the paying for the tree. And that's something we haven't even gotten into yet that we have to. So what we have to add to this is the cost of getting the lumber, you know, getting the log. Now, a lot of guys get logs on uh, Craigslist, I've seen. A lot of people will want trees cut down, and you can get trees free. But on the whole, that's not what I found to happen. Now, I know there's some websites where people seem to be getting quite a bit of uh, lumber free, you know, logs for free, and that's fine. Whatever floats your boat and whatever you can do to make a couple bucks, great. But I'm doing this as if, you know, you had to go in the woods, cut the tree down, and go from there. All right, so anyway, 281 an hour to say to somebody, this is how much I'm going to charge you when I cut up the log. This would be to cut up my log, 
okay, to cut my log and give you the log, this is what you're paying. Now, granted, 320, 320 board feet, you can cut up three logs, so te technically you would divide this by three and that would be how much they're paying for that log to be cut up, which is roughly, what is that, about a hundred bucks or less. So, um, <clears throat> you know, understand what I'm saying there with this. And then, so now we're going to let that go, the hourly rate, because we're not really interested in the hourly rate now, although it's given to us here. But we are interested in this board foot thing. Okay, so um, now how do we cut corners then to come down to that number to change this 88 cents to something that's more practical? So let me just, you know, divide this out. 319 for a 2 by 4 divided by, um, let's see, 319 divided by 5.3, which is the board feet in it, is 60 cents a board foot. So we have to somehow get this number down around 60 cents to be competitive. All right, so this question, which is how do we cut corners to come down to a number that is an hourly board foot number that will come in line with the current market. That's the question. And let me just tell you that this is a typical question that the biggest of corporations ask at 98% of their morning meetings. How do we cut corners without, you know, ruining our um, product? Now, a lot of people cut corners, and you know this, like, you know, you buy tools or things, and some, they're not what they ought to be. I know I was watching a video about a guy having problems with a, a certain brand tractor not holding up. You know, these are things that you, you run into where a company has said, okay, we have to bring our price in line. How are we going to do it? Well, they chose to make a cheaper product. Uh, I don't recommend that. I think that that's uh, a death sentence for you. But nonetheless, it's an option. Alright, so anyway, we got to try to get this 88 cents down to 60 cents. So what we'll do is we'll look at a couple of options. Alright, so how do we get this number down? Well, um, here let's talk about a couple ways to align your cost to the market. In other words, lower the price per board foot in this case that we're going to charge to do this work. Well, first of all, do not, under any circumstance, reduce your profit. This 25% here, do not change that. Okay? Now, this number here or this number here can change, but don't let the 25% change. In other words, if you look at, um, let's see, if you look at the formula up here, you'll see H69, which is this number here, um, gets multiplied by, let me find it, gets multiplied by the 25 percent, I don't know this number, yeah, it gets multiplied by 1.25, which is 25 percent, to bring you in line with, you know, the profit that you want to make. So don't change that. So again, do not under any circumstances reduce your profit margin or whatever you want to call it. I'm just saying 25%. And my reasoning for this, and you may like this, you may not like it, it doesn't matter, it's just my reasoning. In the Bible it says the laborer deserves his wages. And that is you. You are the laborer to your own business. And believe me, if you're not in business now, once you start it, you will find yourself working 80 hours a week in no time at all, especially if you want to do everything that's needed to really take care of your business. And a lot of it is free time. But since you're the one making it grow and you're the one owning it and you're the one who benefits by all your good decisions, and of course you lose by the bad one, you know, you are expected and it's just natural that you're going to lose some money. But it's not like you can't have a living out of it, because you can, and you can have a good living. All right, so number one is do not reduce this 25%. Don't take it down to 20 or 15 or any of that. Find it somewhere else. All right, so um, one of the things that you can do is increase the number of board feet that your mill produces, and that's known as efficiency. So right here we're talking about this. 
So um, this is also why guys buy some totally hydraulic mills. Now we're talking about doing this with the LT15 so it's a little different even with the hydraulic mill you still need to get logs out of the woods and uh, to the mill. All right, So that's still that whole ballpark of people and numbers and equipment is still there. Just because the logs are sitting next to the sawmill, I mean, if you have a customer who does that for you, great. But you're still going to have to move logs because if the log moves, let's say the log rolls off the bunk and rolls 15 feet away, if you have no way of pulling that thing over there, you still need a piece of equipment. So all I'm saying is, you know, this is basically a good uh, setup that we have here. All right, so the number uh, one thing to do, now I told you what not to do, which is to change the profit. Don't change that 25%, but what you want to do is you want to try and improve your efficiency. So I had said yesterday that I know when my grandson was up here, because he's, you know, young, he's got a lot going for him, um, I'm positive he could double this. So even by taking this number, and, and let's look at this, um, we're taking H71, which is, uh, let's see, H71, we're taking this number here, okay, we're taking the, the hourly rate plus profit, or, you know, plus your 25%, and we're dividing it by 320 to get this number. Okay, well, if you take the number, the 320, so I'm going to highlight this, but I want you to look up here, this is where the formula is. This is saying, in case you're not used to uh, spreadsheets, this is saying take H71 and divide it by 320. Well, let's suppose we take H71 and inst instead of dividing it by 320, suppose we divide it by, I don't know, let's add, let's add one more log to that and say 450. Okay, so let's add or put 450 there as the dividing number. So look what happens. We're down to 63 cents already. So all we got to do then is cut one more board or one more log. I'm I'm sorry, one more log per um, hour, right? And we're in good shape. So basically, that's all you're after. So now it may be easier said than done. You you know you may have problems with the log. You could have something in it or whatever. That's why you buy. You know, you're going to have to buy the um, uh, the metal detector and charge for it. You're going to have to buy, um, you know, something to grind the bark off, a bark remover, or sometimes you can get them with uh, the wood misers. Um, you saw the little one that I had gotten. And like I say, I'm not in this for the big, long haul. I'm in this just for a certain amount of red oak, and whatever happens after that, if I decide to pursue it, then I'll follow these guidelines. But so what I'm saying is just by taking this 320 and increasing this, okay, by one more log, you could change this number. Now that's one way. However, um, that's not the only way, and we're going to look at some other ways. So that's one, that's one thing you could do. So I'm going to replace my number back to what it was. And we're back to our 88 cents. All right, so you know that if you work harder and you work faster and you work more efficiently cutting logs, this <laughs> might help you. Um, you know, whether you cut big logs or small logs, look at it this way. If you put a big log on the mill, it takes you a little longer to get through it. If you put a small log on the mill, you don't get as much lumber out of it. You still went through the time of putting it up there, setting it up, you know, aligning it. So I don't think that, you know, what size log you use is necessarily something that could help this number. Now, I could be wrong, and if I am, then, hey, point it out to me. I don't know everything about sawmilling. I'm sure there's guys out there who know more than I do. But I'm just saying, I don't think that that would be an option. All right, so in, then anyway, after the one about the uh, efficiency, the next thing that everybody runs to, and if you look at your bottom numbers here, these these numbers here, over to the 40 hours, because this is an hourly number, these all include... Okay, so the battery went dead again, <coughs> but uh, let's see, where were we real quick to recap this? We talked about... 
changing the uh, um, board foot an hour, which uh, made a major difference in this. I brought it back to the 320 though, <coughs> and what I did was, if you look where the red is, I uh, lowered the wages of some of these people, the helper, the planer down to 15, the truck driver down to 15, um, the skidder operator I'm going to leave the same, and the logger I'm going to leave the same. Now the thing is, is without getting rid of the people, is there a way to reduce the cost? That's where we're at. Well, I lowered this number from twenty to fifteen dollars an hour, brought this from forty some thousand to thirty one thousand a year, and we we only went down a couple of pennies in the board foot price of things. Okay. We came down, you know, quite a bit with these numbers, but we're only down to eighty two cents. And that doesn't really get us into the ballpark. So somehow or another, and we can't really change the price of the equipment because we're pretty much at rock bottom. I don't think you can get a good chainsaw for less than this. Um, maybe you can, I don't think so. If you do, it's not going to be very much. Uh, the same thing with the skidder. We're already down at the bottom trying to find you know a piece of equipment that will work for that kind of money. Uh, the truck thing is iffy. You could maybe change this price of the truck and stuff and, you know, lower all these numbers. But, again, you know, you have to look into that. But this is how you begin to research stuff and try and figure out what can happen. You can also look at the individual and see if they can't um, produce more as well. Now, at this point, we have not talked about... You know, we talked it down here at the bottom of the page. We're looking at 320 board foot an hour. Now, let's just call a log for in terms of easy numbers. Let's call a log roughly 300 or 100 board foot out of a log, an eight foot log. So, if we're cutting four log, or let's say at this point we're cutting three logs an hour, if we cut three logs an hour, three times eight is 24 logs a day. So is the uh, logger able to supply us with 24 logs a day? That's the other thing that, you know, comes into play here. Uh, something else would be to maybe reduce hours. It's not like you're laying off, but maybe you could reduce the hours. Instead of working a 40-hour week, maybe we could work a 32-hour week. Although, I never understood what the benefit was to working you know, eight hours a day and not working on a Friday. I mean, if you're working more hours, like say 10 hours a day and you're making up, uh, you know, Friday's uh, day, I guess that would be the same. But I, I just can't see not working on a nice sunny day. So I'm a, I don't really go along with that. However, it, it can be done. You can reduce hours here and that would change, make a change in this. So um, let's say that it's, and the thing with logging is a lot of times, you know, there's seasons for cutting and when you don't want to cut. So you may have somebody with the, you might have the logger, the chainsaw, and the skidder running part of the year. And then, and the truck. And then once you have everything at the mill site, having the mill run the other part of the year. Okay, so this is another way of doing things. So you have to look at all of that. And if you, if you had, you know, everything down to the truck here... Um, working for six months out of the year, and then the other part of the... Everything okay on your walk, honey? Yes, thank you. I'm recording here. All right, guys, so uh, now you know why I have the thing around my neck. All right, anyway, um, what was I saying? Yeah, if you're only going to work part of the year with a certain load of people and then, you know, move those same people, maybe the... They can be also the sawyer, the helper, and uh, you know the uh, other people in the other sections of the work packages. Then that would be a way of reducing prices too. But the main thing here is that you understand that this number has to go down. So, like I said, the fastest way to get that down is to cut another log a day or an hour, one more log per hour, and that may be difficult. It uh, it seems easy because you can get the numbers in line, but it might be hard to do. Now the thing that we have not talked about, okay, is um, 
the, the price of getting the actual lumber. So we have, you know, I mean the actual logs. We have everything down here we need to go cut the log and to bring the log to the mill and to even store it after the mill in the uh, kiln. But what do we do about actually paying for the log? And this is where you actually have to get the number down even more. If you're going to be cutting um, framing lumber, you have to get it down. Now, <clears throat> with that said, there's a lot of things like if you cut hardwood, and most people will cut hardwood with a mill because um, when it comes to framing lumber, you have to have a stamp on it uh, in order to actually sell it for framing lumber. Now, it depends on where you are at, I guess, in the country. Uh, sometimes you can use non-framing lumber, non-stamped framing lumber for things like sheds, garages, and uh, you know the kiln, for instance. You can use it for um, barns, possibly, and then possibly not. It all depends on what your local code is, so you need to check that. So um, you're going to have to get into something now where we talk about um, the um, comparison of what you're cutting up to what is needed. So in my mind, framing lumber is one of the best things to be able to sell if you can sell it at a good price. That's because I was a builder. However, a lot of this live edge stuff is being sold for ridiculous prices. And if you can sell it for that and the market's paying $12, $16 a board foot for this, well then by all means, that's where you're going to have to go. So you have to look at the market. What all can you sell? You know, and advertise it. That's another thing that we don't have in here. We don't have overhead in here. Overhead will add to this. So will pricing out, you know, your, and in overhead you're going to have the cost of your land and stuff. So, um, I don't know how long I have this video, but at this point I'm going to stop here for today and leave you with the idea of, you know, thinking how you can cut costs. And at the same time, we are not finished with this thing, okay? And maybe we can adjust this down to working a certain number of months in the year. And then, you know, a lot of guys like being laid off in the winter, for instance. Although, if you use those same guys to do the uh, second half of the operation, the milling, you know, they wouldn't get laid off. So, it's possible that that may work because to have a um, contract to be cutting 24 logs a day or an hour, I mean, well, no, what would that be? Yeah, that's a day. To have a contract where you're going to get 24 logs every day, you're going to have to be doing a lot of research and a lot of uh, job seeking, you know, from state forests, and you're not guaranteed to get all those work, all that work, and you need money to get into those things. So, again, this is to make you think and try to get you on the right track of keeping your, you know, the numbers here so that you can afford to replace things, buy new things when they break down, and um, go from there. So. I'm going to stop this video today with having gone over some of the different things that you might be able to change to lower prices. The one thing I want you to notice is we did not go down very much here by lowering the amount of wages you're paying. Not that it's not a good idea to lower wages if you can. You know, in other words, you don't, I'm not here to take the money away from the man. I'm here to say this is what we offer a planer, you know, or even less. You could go down to $12 an hour. So, you know, these are things that uh, you need to consider. So, I'll put this video up and then uh, you can watch this and see if you can come up with some ideas on your own of how to cut some costs. But the main thing, like I say, this bottom line here, when you look at this, these are your hour hourly costs for manpower, machinery, um, the cost of money, and the, co and the cost of materials. And, and in this business, there's not a lot of materials to buy. So, uh, anyway, think about it, see what you can come up with on your own, and like I said, I'll, sp I'll share the spreadsheet after we get done with it. I do want to take and add some more things to this, change it a little bit, see if we can't change how this might work a little bit better for a small mill like this, more realistic working hours, uh, you know, more realistic amount of lumber to be cut. But this is something to think about. Now, as far as the 82 cents goes <clears throat> a board foot, if you're selling red oak and you compare this red oak to, you know, any other red oak that's being sold 
on the market, you can certainly make a good profit with cutting red oak. So, and uh, like I say, if they're if you're cutting this live edge stuff or you know oddball shapes and they they want things like knots and stuff in them, which like I say, for me, I was a builder, so that confuses me why you would want, you know, even want that stuff. But I do understand why you want it if you're a furniture maker. You know, when people talk about uh, uh, the features in the wood, you know, um, features are okay as long as it looks good hanging on the wall to me. Um, I don't need a lecture on all of the different ways of, you know, using lumber because I know what they are. I'm just saying this is something for you to think about. You know, what do you think you can get? Let's face it, um, where I'm at, uh, red oak is uh, normally 60 foot tall and it's got no branches on the bottom parts of it because it's uh, lost them uh, with the uh, head of the tree looking for sunlight. So we've got some nice logs here. You may be in an area where you don't have that type of stuff. You might have problems with your wood. If you're working with beech, you know, beach is a headache because there's a lot of uh, deficiencies in beach in a, in a lot of areas. Or maybe you can sell lumber to a uh, people who make um, uh, skids, you know, or uh, pallets. Uh, these are things that you need to think about. You could uh, get in contact with contractors. I mentioned this before about uh, lumber for for low beds and low boys and trailers and all kind of other things. But you have to advertise it as well. People have to know you're there. You can't just sit in the middle woods like where I am and think somebody's going to come here. The only ones who may come are the ones who know, you know, my neighbors who know I have something. So you need to advertise. That's another thing that has to be put into this. So the next time we talk, we're going to talk about overhead then. And we'll add a lot of those things in. And we'll see what we can do about lowering this price so that if we cut framing lumber that we're in the ballpark. Okay guys, so have a good one. Bye.